Good evening and welcome to today's tropics for August 18th, 2021. Please note, I am not a meteorologist and this video is just a collection of my thoughts and opinions about the storms I'm talking about and for any decision making, please consult National Hurricane Center or your local officials. So today I'm looking at Hurricane Grace, which is currently in the northwestern Caribbean and uh, Tropical Storm Henri, which is currently in the uh, in the southwestern Atlantic, just southwest of Bermuda here. So let's look at Grace first, and uh, it's not looking the greatest, you know, kind of storms at this intensity sometimes don't look the greatest in infrared imagery anyway, but you can see that there's some dry air kind of wrapping in and trying to get around to the, uh, into the kind of inner core here. There's some newer convection that's trying to wall it off, but uh, so far there is a bit of dry air intrusion right now. And it's certainly not helping and it's kind of keeping a cap on the storm right now. Uh, there's also a bit of uh, northwesterly shear, which has kind of kept it a bit southeast weighted. And you can see right here, there's a decent amount of convection over uh, right here. And perhaps all the rising air here is also causing some uh, subsidence in this area and uh, generally not really helping them in the dry air department. Uh, and looking at the water vapor loop, you can see one source for the dry air, and uh, this is related to this large upper ridge here over the Gulf of Mexico. You can see uh, the northeasterly flow here, and a lot of the northeasterly flow coming over the Bahamas of Florida. Uh, but then there's a lot of uh, more westerly flow coming out of uh, the outflow of Greece, and so between that, you've got, kind of gotten uh, zonally oriented. Uh, upper trough. Uh, the problem is, is that means there's a lot of upper convergence right here where you get those northeasterly wind, uh, winds beginning and uh, one that kind of constricts the outflow of the storm. Uh, two, it also means that uh, it uh, there's some upper or there's some sinking air here, here from the upper convergence. And that means some drier air is warms uh, and sinks. And there's a lot of that, uh, especially kind of under the outflow here. Uh, and that's causing some environmental dry air to kind of come down and try to wrap around. Same time, the Caribbean isn't uh, the most moist area right now. Uh, so this, currently it's not doing the greatest. Uh, we'll see if it can kind of uh, wrap around a bit more and uh, develop from here. Uh, if it can kind of get an inner core going, you might see, we might see some uh, strengthening instead of kind of the slow strengthening or steady state that it's uh, currently in before it makes landfall on the Yucatan, uh, Yucatan Peninsula relatively soon. We've also got two recon missions that are currently going into Greece, and uh, you can see one uh, other problem for it that's going to perhaps keep it from strengthening too quickly uh, in this area and this is because uh, it's kind of broad like uh, on the northern side here we do where you do have uh, hurricane force uh, winds at flight level uh, they're kind of they're not really that close to the center and then if you go further south there isn't really a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of strong winds at all because there hasn't really been a whole lot of convection as this is been more of a drier kind of import zone. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a bit of a broader system right now. Uh, again, there's this new convective burst that might kind of cut off that dry air and maybe build a more uh, concentrated area. But so far, this isn't really what you'd see uh, for a strengthening uh, or a more rapidly intensifying system. Uh, we've got this other recon mission here, and you can see uh, the maximum winds are kind of uh, further out, we'll see if they kind of concentrate here again with that convective burst, but so far uh, we, we don't quite have that, and we'll see if that happens before it runs into land. Uh, after it runs into land, it's probably going to end up uh, getting disrupted. It's not going to get shredded up uh, like it would if it were in the Greater Antilles, because the Yucatan Peninsula is generally flat, but of course there's land friction. Uh, that usually can uh, interrupt a an inner core, so you might see uh, some weakening depending on how far north it goes. It looks like it'll travel over the entirety of the peninsula. Uh, so we'll see what ends up on the other side, but in the Bay of Campe uh, Campeche, it looks like 
it will experience better conditions. Uh, here, the uh, the conditions are generally moister. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of dry air until you get further north, and that might allow for uh, less dry air intrusions than for to kind of uh, wrap around and maybe become a bit more CDO dominant here. Uh, at the same time, we're not. It's not going to be near that upper trough. There's going to be the upper trough further uh, to the west over the Caribbean, but uh, the more of the upper level flow should be uh, d dominated by this upper level ridge to the north, uh, and there, uh, while well, it might cause a bit of northerly shear, uh, the conditions seem pretty decent. And depending on what we get out of here, we could see uh, it intensifying to. Uh, Something uh, like perhaps uh, overshooting the net, uh, NHC forecast, uh, but we'll have to see what happens over land because if we have a very disorganized system after the land interaction, uh, it might have a harder, harder time strengthening. So uh, it's a bit of a mystery, but we'll see once it actually gets there. Uh, looking at the official NHC cone, I can see. Uh, the steering, the bridge is expected to strengthen over top of it, so uh, while it's moving west-northwest now, it should start curving a bit more to the south, and uh, with the more northerly, northerly winds aloft, uh, at, as a result of that uh, flow as I was showing you earlier, it seems that a deeper system would move a bit more south, so if it does overshoot this uh, forecast, we'll see if it does do that. Uh, and uh, as for the uh, impacts in the near term, uh, there's our hurricane warnings up for uh, parts of the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula and generally a lot of uh, tropical storm warnings right now. Uh, so hopefully you are prepared for that right now because the conditions uh, will be deteriorating pretty soon depending on where you are. Uh, but in general, this system's pretty close, and hopefully you are uh, well on the way to being prepared for it. And uh, in the western part of the Bay of Campeche here on the coast, uh, it looks like we'll have conditions start to deteriorate, uh, deteriorate uh, sometime Friday evening. Uh, so you have some time to prepare, but it's not too far away. And uh, There should be some watches and warnings that will start to be uh, put up for this area as uh, Hurricane Grace gets in, or gets closer to this area. Uh, hopefully, you stay safe. Uh, look, next up, let's look at Tropical Storm Henri. Uh, and it, it it's not the most organized. It, it looks like it might be kind of uh, on the verge of hurricane status, but there's a lot of northerly shear. And, uh, you know, it's got deep convection, but it's not really... Uh, it's kind of shapeless. There's not like a whole lot of structure to it. It's not like it's wrapping around trying to form an eye wall. Uh, there, there's some outflow from that deep convection, and you can see it come, kind of coming out of here. So it's a divergent upper, or it's divergent northerly shear here, uh, and it's, it's not interrupting the anvil layer. But you can see all these kind of little thunderstorms kind of trying to get going, and that's a uh, kind of that northerly shear, and if you have a keen eye on it, see, even though there's that outflow, these thunderstorms kind of go right under the outflow. So there is some uh, under outflow shear, and um, while Henri doesn't look like it's uh, weak enough that it'll get totally shredded up by the shear, uh, it looks like this is causing it to kind of get uh, tilted and less organized. And it seems that there's beginnings of a central cold cover pattern right here. We have shapeless deep convection, but n not really much under the hood. Uh, and the shear should continue for the next little while, or little while, probably around another 24 hours. So um, we might see it kind of disorganized for the next little while and kind of stay steady in strength, not... Uh, quickly weakening, but not quickly really strengthening either until it gets more organization. Uh, and you can see here there's this uh, upper level ridge that's actually related to the one in the Gulf of Mexico, and this is putting a lot of uh, upper le or upper level northerly winds into the storm, and, and currently that's not really helping a lot with it. 
So again, this northerly shear should continue for a while as this uh, ridge continues pushing uh, northeasterly wind aloft on it, which uh, generally quits, or equates to uh, northerly shear. However, things will start to change. We'll have this uh, upper low kind of out of frame here. This will uh, retrograde and kind of move southwestward and uh, kind of push on this upper level ridge. At the same time, you'll have uh, Henri start or move uh, westward and start to curve up northeast and can try to get into this uh, upper level or area of upper level uh, layer of winds. Then you got this uh, trough here that's going to uh, move eastward and kind of tilt more negative. And as a result, uh, the pattern that could or that is expected to or probably happen on uh, Saturday is you'll have this negatively tilted trough here. And that will provide a nice uh, poleward outflow channel for uh, Henri. And then this uh, upper level low that'll be kind of retrograding here will provide another good outflow channel. So once it gets into that low shear, probably sometime uh, late on Friday or late tomorrow, that is, uh, and then eventually this shear gets very favorable, probably late on Friday, uh, we'll see some intensification uh, as it recurves. And uh, based on how well or how well it's doing, what this year lets up and how strong it is, uh, that has big implications on the steering. Uh, if, you know, if you have been all, uh, tr tracking the storm in general, you, you'll notice this upper level uh, or this upper level trough that's uh, negatively tilted. Uh, that, that might mean something for the steering, and indeed. Uh, looking at the uh, GFS Ensemble here uh, three days out, so this is Saturday afternoon, you can see at 500 millibars, uh, there is this uh, trough here, and it's pretty strong, and again, it's negatively tilted, so at this uh, kind of at this area between the ridge and the trough, you have southeasterly winds, and so if you have a strong tropical cyclone at this level, it'll feel some uh, of the flow from the Bermuda high here, but it's not really that strong at this level, and it really gets overpowered by the trough that's a lot closer to it. Or to it. So you'll have uh, well, one stronger storm that'll be further to the west part of the, uh, this area, but it'll also start to curve, or curve a bit left perhaps if it's stronger. And as this trough passes by, it'll slow down in, a, in the Princeton or vicinity of the northeast here. Uh, on the other hand, if we have it really weaken and not really get itself together, uh, let's look at, or here's the uh, 850 millibar uh, wind, so it's a lot lower down. You can see uh, like an overbearing uh, a Bermuda high here and a lot of southwesterly flow, not really a whole lot of uh, a trough in, uh, at all. There's kind of this weak thing right here, but the uh, Bermuda High is a lot stronger, and you'd have more flow kind of going north and then east around that, and you'd have a more harmless uh, out-to-sea sort of uh, flow instead of uh, the areas further up here, or you'd expect uh, maybe a curve towards the uh, northeast. So looking at the official NHC cone for Henri, uh, it's expected to kind of continue over or continue westward under this ridge here. Uh, it's important to uh, know how far south it goes. You know, it could continue to slowly go more south, and that would mean uh, it would uh, be further under this ridge and not get caught as much by the trough. So it might be later to uh, recurve. And generally, the stronger it is, it will take or it will go further west, especially toward uh, towards the end of this period, when it, uh, a stronger storm would curve almost uh, to the northwest, perhaps if uh, it is uh, on the kind of higher end of expectations. So we, uh, we might have a strong storm, though weakening as it gets in the cold colder water. Uh, in the general vicinity of the northeast uh, coast, and there could be uh, persistent uh, wind and perhaps rain if it gets cl uh, close to the coast. 
Uh, it's a bit further out, and the track is kind of uncertain right now because it is very. Uh, it, it it depends a lot on this uh, on the intensity, and it's really hard to uh, forecast intensity. So uh, we'll see what happens. But definitely, if you're in the or in the a lot of the northeastern coast. Uh, keep your eye on Ari because it could be uh, an issue that you could be dealing with sometime uh, during the weekend into the beginning of next week. Uh, otherwise, the Atlantic is pretty quiet. If you have any questions, comments about my video, uh, please let me know. Thanks for watching.